Two beads each with charge Q and mass M are a horizontal, frictionless, non-conducting circular hoop of radius R. Okay, so this is horizontal. So therefore, mg will not be taken into consideration because uh, like, like it's on a table. Okay, so this is M and Q. This is a bead, and this is again another bead. Okay. One of the beads is glued to the hoop. So let this be glued. Well, the other one performs a small oscillation about its equilibrium position. So of course, the equilibrium position is going to be like this because here the force is in this direction and the normal is in this direction. Well, the other one small performs small oscillations. So now for performing small oscillation, okay, what we have to do is we purposefully displace this okay to here it is an like this is a little exaggerated version okay this is a small oscillation so anyway this is uh, you know uh, displaced okay so well, the other one performs small oscillation. What is okay? The square of the angular frequency of the small oscillations is given by. So we want to find out omega is square. Okay. So the first thing is, let this be theta. Okay. So if this is theta, then uh, so this is the center. So this arc, if it is subtending theta at the circumference, it must be subtending two theta at the center. Now, since both are radius, so it's an isosceles triangle. So this also becomes theta. Now this distance D is going to be, so this is uh, R. So this D is going to be so if you see this is r cos theta so therefore d becomes 2 r cos theta so now the force which is experienced is going to be k q square by d square which is equal to k into q square by 4 r square cos square theta of course this is 2 theta so therefore uh, and this is theta so this is the force okay and this is theta okay so if we see here this force is going to have so this this is theta so this force is f cos theta in this direction and f sin theta in this direction okay i'm going to show it again a better way so this is the force and this is the normal and this is having an angle theta of course it was k q square divided by 4 r square cos square theta this was the force so therefore force tangential is going to be f sine of theta so therefore we write the torque is equal to f sine theta into r which is k q square by 4 r square cos square theta into sin theta into r okay now this should be equal to i alpha and uh, i is uh, mr square into alpha and we can see clearly that when we have rotated like when we have purposefully done the displacement angular displacement theta 
in the anti clockwise direction then the torque is in clockwise direction so therefore we introduce a minus sign here so now we will be having alpha is equal to so this r and you know this is gone so therefore minus k q square sin theta by 4 r cube cos square theta into m so this is alpha so now since alpha is going alpha is this so therefore now if you see it is displaced to theta from the center so we have to write in terms of theta so since theta is a small cos theta we uh, is 1 and sin theta gets replaced by theta so therefore we have to write minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q square by 4 r cube into m and this is theta now since the displacement from the mean position uh, with respect to center is 2 theta and the torque we are going to you know we calculated the torque also about c so therefore we write here 2 theta okay and into 1 by 2 we can also do like this let you know we can do it. let 2 theta is equal to you know uh, let 2 theta is equal to let us say you know beta and so on we can do okay so the point is that we have to express it in terms of alpha is equal to minus omega square and the dis the angular displacement so the angular displacement is 2 theta so therefore i am purposefully multiplying it by 2 and dividing by 2 so therefore this comes out to be you know so 4 4 16 2 is a 32 so therefore q square q square 32 pi epsilon naught r cube m so therefore the answer is going to be thank you